The NES swept its way through North America in the late 80s, and like many other kids at the time, that's what I grew up with. Finding out about the Master System's existence blew open an entire new game library to explore, and before long, I was playing through so many marvelous stories that reminded me of old favorites. Here's a list of games on the NES that have some equivalent experiences on the Master System that are worth having a look at. All six Mega Man games can be broadly described as platformers, with a dependency on items or skills to exploit bosses and the environment, and a game that fits nicely into that mold for the Master System is Psychic World. It tells the story of a woman named Lucia who has to rescue her sister after she's kidnapped by monsters. Lucia has a large arsenal of abilities at her disposal to help her succeed in her mission, ranging from shooting fire and ice projectiles all the way to invincibility and levitation. While many of the skills that Mega Man gets equipped with hone in specifically on boss or enemy weaknesses, Psychic Worlds really broadened the scope of their use to the levels and the obstacles found within them as a core mechanic. Making it through each stage relies not only on precision platforming, but also some skillful puzzle solving to get around. The Legend of Zelda is a top-down action-adventure game that's loved by many and has spawned a plethora of other installments following the initial 1986 release on NES. While the Master System has quite a few games like it under its belt, none fit the bill as a Zelda-like quite as much as Golden Axe Warrior does. The game features a sword-swinging hero on a quest to retrieve nine crystals that are hidden across three continents, with the main goal being to find the Golden Axe and destroy Death Adder to end his reign of terror. Like Zelda, there's a huge overworld and many labyrinths to explore, with each dungeon housing key items like the torch and the rope that enhance your ability to fight enemies and maneuver the various landscapes. Some of the crypticness of The Legend of Zelda is washed away here because of meaningful interactions with non-playable characters in dedicated towns scattered just about everywhere, and because the game was exclusively released in English-speaking regions, the writing is great and the game's directives are easy to understand. There's even a magic system with offensive and defensive spells, bringing in a much-needed projectile attack and healing to even the playing field. If turn-based role-playing games like Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior are your thing, there's a fun and grind-heavy game to be found in Miracle Warriors Seal of the Dark Lord. It's a bit less polished than other games out there, especially in the localization department, but it does a great job of bringing that medieval flair to the Master System. You play as a group of warriors on a quest to reseal a recently opened door that's allowing monsters to pass through into their world. The game is filled with interesting enemies, challenging boss fights, and head-scratchers for puzzles to solve. If you want something a little more refined, a premium turn-based RPG experience is available in Fantasy Star. This was the first game in the quadrilogy released for Sega consoles, taking the RPG genre to new heights all the way into space. You play as Alice Landale, a young woman on a quest to avenge the death of her brother and bring down the tyrannical rule of a corrupt dictator, all while gathering up some new friends along the way. It was a one-of-a-kind experience at the time, mixing traditional turn-based RPG action with a science fiction setting, a great story, compelling characters, and just as much grinding as you'd expect to find in games from this time. The first and third Castlevania games on NES present a staggering challenge for the casual gamer, but there's something just as macabre that comes in a bit lighter on the difficulty scale to be explored in Master of Darkness. At a glance, it's obvious that this game borrows heavily from the non-RPG Castlevania games. You have a close-range main weapon and a projectile sub-weapon. You can find health-restoring items in breakable walls, and you're also after Dracula. The main difference here is that you play as a doctor from England in the time of Jack the Ripper, and there's a greater focus on ethereal themes rather than zombies and walking skeletons. Master of Darkness beefs up its narrative with exposition that plays out between the stages through visual cutscenes, and although you could say that both games call upon many gothic influences, there's a bit more spook factor on the Master System side. The first Super Mario Bros. game for NES is probably one of the most well-known and straightforward side-scrolling platform games to have graced many of us in childhood, and Wonder Boy for the Master System aligns nicely with its style. As a straight platformer without any bells or whistles apart from the occasional weapon upgrade, the simplicity of Wonder Boy makes it the truest comparator to the inaugural Mario Bros. adventure. 
there are a ton of other platforming-centric games that build other mechanics into their gameplay that do deserve a look as well. The Ninja Gaiden games on NES are known for being brutally unforgiving and downright unfair at times, and lucky for us, there's a standalone Ninja Gaiden release on the Master System that's even different from the one that came out for the Game Gear. It brings back Ryu on yet another vengeance mission, but this time his story is paired with reclaiming the stolen Bushido scroll to prevent the destruction of the world. The plot unfolds through the same charming cutscenes of other Ninja Gaiden installments, but the gameplay itself is a melange of attributes from the NES trilogy, including being able to cling and pull up to ledges, the use of multiple subweapons, and an exciting boss fight after each major subsection of the game. Alex Kidd in Shinobi World is another enjoyable play, with a lighter overall mood than Ninja Gaiden, but it comes packed full of the same challenging platforming and combat of slower-paced games like Shinobi that should still feed the need for more ninja action. If you're into side-scrolling adventure games with some loose RPG elements like Faxanadu or Castlevania II Simon's Quest, there are a few Master System options. The first is Wonder Boy and Monster Land, a game about a boy on his way to slay a dragon. Money for purchasing better weapons and armor at shops can be found by felling enemies and searching each stage thoroughly, with plenty of secrets to uncover along the way. A second choice is Dane in the Jungle Fighter, which unlike Wonder Boy in Monster Land is significantly more prescribed in how it unfolds with shorter, segmented stages. There are very few opportunities for exploration, but there is an experience system here that essentially translates into a longer health bar for the main character by finding and picking up stars found in chests in each level. The story of Dane in the Jungle Fighter is surprisingly robust, with many twists and turns along the way, providing a short yet thoroughly engrossing adventure. A third game to try out in this vein is Lord of the Sword. Of all of the games from this category, Lord of the Sword is probably the least polished, and it's almost completely devoid of RPG elements with the exception of weapon upgrades. What it does do better than the others is boast an open world to explore, and it's also chock full of the same cryptic translation issues of many games from this era to make you feel right at home. Metroid is a fan favorite, and while not many video games have been able to capture the ambience of that experience, Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap does a wonderful job of emulating its other main feature, a game world that slowly opens up with each new ability gained. Wonder Boy 3 sees the protagonist traveling across the lands in search of the Salamander Cross, the only item known to be able to reverse a curse placed on him that changed him into a lizard. By defeating each dragon adversary along the way, a new animal form is gained, each with its own new skill that can interact differently with the environment or reach areas that were previously inaccessible with other forms. This game is rife with exploration, and while you won't be freezing enemies or blowing up floors to find a way to somewhere new, you'll be scrutinizing every place you go, looking for a lead into uncharted territory to keep things rolling forward. If you'd like to see some Master System gaming in action, swing by my live stream sometime. There's a link in the description. I hope you found something new to try, and thanks very much for watching.